I'm the underdog. Put it all on me, undercover boss. It all fall on me. I ain't wanna talk now, nah, but they call on me. What you running from, huh? Let me talk my piece. Yeah, ain't nobody out doing me on my own thing except that. Took a couple years, had a setback. Went back to the drum board, put the pen back. Left that out by the bed where I slept at. Just in case I might forget that. And they don't get that. Hitting me up like you on text back. Real friends get it, I don't sweat that. Too busy trying to turn Jetta to an S class. Get laughed. Turn a backpack to a jetpack. Then I went past them. Funny how I went from plateau to platinum. Funny how I skipped my class and outclassed them. Funny how I'm last out, but I outlast them. But they ain't laughing now. Put them in the ring, won't last around. Pack a punch like a Pacquiao. You to cast me out, but me, I'm the underdog. Put it all on me, undercover boss. It all fall on me. I ain't wanna talk now, nah, but they call on me. What you running from, huh? Let me talk my piece. Look, Monday to Sunday, never skip one day. Do this for my family and my son's sake. I never complain, I just go up to Give me a shot and I took it, no pump fake. Listen close, what's it gonna be? You can sink or flow. We gon' find out when they miss the bow. Switch up the beat like a sickle mode. Hard drive full of these bullets, they know that it's loaded. They down me some bullets, you know I ain't folding. They see what I've read and they know when I wrote it. I mean what I said and they know when I spoke it. I still got a ways to go. Learn from the grace, I'm taking some notes. Promise I got it, I'm taking an oath. Red popping up like I'm making some toast. Yeah. Do it my own way, ain't no one telling me how I can move, okay? Move it my own pace, I got a lot on my list to do, okay? No one in my lane, I'm on the one and there'll never be two, okay? I just keep making the rules, okay? Won't lose, okay? Look, I'm the underdog, put it all on me, undercover boss, it all fall on me. I ain't wanna talk now, nah, but they call on me. What you running from, huh? Let me talk my Obvious signs looking around me, it's hard to deny. Yeah. I mean, just look at the audience size. Oh, robbing you blind like Bonnie and Clyde. Y'all do too much just to fit in. Zach and Cody, we stay twinning. Sweet life only, we stay winning. Been this way since the beginning. Yeah. Me and my buddy, buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. Right. They never catching us lagging. Right. Me and my buddy, Ooh. we working hard for this money. I've been in my bag, yeah. buddy, I got it like that, that Yo, my that. greatest idols are all-time rivals, I'm talking Biggie and Pac Yeah, every room that I walk into, it's like all I hear is applause wow. Hey, I don't need to just roll solo, I got a buddy like Han Solo yeah. I'm in the money, Whoa. I rock polo I never bomb sets, I just bomb photos yeah. Like boom, lights, camera, action, do a big boy, I'm talking Miss Jackson right. Bury those beats, yeah, I'm feeling like Braxton Go. Good Jewish boy, cause I always pay taxes, dude I've been on a mission, got a blast Feel like Jimmy Neutron with the raps Why you always living in the past? Let me give you something that me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack. Me and my buddy, we working hard for this money. You know I've been in my bag, yeah. buddy. I got yeah. it like that, that, that. Me and my buddy, yeah, we never need to understudy. Did it independent, we don't ever need nobody's money. Everybody calling me, they said they wanted something from me. Put me on a song, all of a sudden they be running from me. Running from me like we playing good cop, bad cop. Crowd going crazy like it's Woodstock, can't stop. Every show I'm playing be like new girl, pants drop. Working way too hard, you're never gonna see the man flow. Right, let's do it. Mm. Dad said, don't hold back, go get that, don't hesitate. Mom said, just step back and slow it down, go meditate. Told myself, stay humble, don't say it all with your chest out. But my girl keeps on telling me that I'm the best out. 
mm, lot of plates I keep spinning, can't stop, lot of steak, steaks, fries I keep winning, blindfolded, find a way, wave high and just keep grinning, no time for the minor things, do a lot of things, when you write the bio please don't forget you better hyphenate that, look, pure town and no payola, take over like Jehovah, hit the nines, that's race over, brakes broken, I ain't slowing, outshining, no chain showing, four clubs, I ain't folding, beating me, you got a better chance of getting Drake listening to Daytona, 2C slide in the DMs, we started off on the right foot, what a time to be alive, been seeing my future, my life good, couldn't duplicate what I'm doing, even if you took my rhyme book, my mind took me all the way, straight line moving like my rook, I'm playing chess and I do not check on my mates, cause I don't have time for no friends, I know it's bad, but all my priorities shifted when I saw what I had on hand, I got a window that's not gonna be open forever, so I gotta take what I can, I cannot be shaking hands, I guess we'll see who's around at the end, people say I like it, but I don't care how they feel Don't hit me up on some Let's work fam, I'm trying to build Corny Cox in a video Everybody thought that I signed a deal Did that with no manager, let alone a label I'm behind the wheel, I got one hand up on the steering wheel Other hand up on the rear view Cause on one hand I need tunnel vision Other hand I need a clear view Of my peer group when I pass them up Don't go try testing me Double use, I stack them up Like the logo for the wrestling Wait, mm, I can make a whole album Without ever leaving my bed Bedroom. Microphone with an interface and a MacBook, I let loose Never let nobody hold me up, I do the hard work If the artist wanna take too long, I know Photoshop, I'll do the artwork Bigger myself, yeah, shout out to Russ, I did it myself Heaven on earth, giving them hell, keeping it light, tipping the scale Been making noise like ringing the bell, they know the time, I'm ringing the bell Name getting round, it's ringing the bell, I'm ending the round, I'm ringing the Boiling hot, 100 degrees, just keep it moving, there's nothing to see Rolling the dice, told them the price, they waited a week so I doubled the fee Close to my goal like a puck in the crease, ownership baby, no nothing is least Talk all you want it means nothing to me, they throwing me shade, I'm loving the breeze Ooh, you on the way out, I'm on the way in, I'm at the fight, you at the way in All of my family really gon' make it, that's where they're the way in Mission complete, I don't fold till I get it, patient with time and I know when I'm ready Still got a way to go hold the confetti, you know what they say about slowing and steady But dad said don't hold back, go get that done don't hesitate mom said just step back and slow it down go meditate told myself stay humble don't say it all with your chest out but my girl keeps on telling me that i'm the best out <laughs> this mic is too high drop it drop it drop it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i just been living life feet a bankroll had a saying go got it flooded to my ankles need a raincoat pair of boots and a dang bow gotta stay I might pull up in a stagecoach playing Beethoven. Whoa. Didn't think that it would work. Yeah. Now they coming out the woodwork. Built up my own platform. Could say I'm in the woodwork. Made the song go viral. Probably off some footwork. Well, either that or the hook work. Wait. Always think of the hook first. Yeah. Now I got it. Make a bag just to keep the lights on. I'm on your desktop. I'm an icon. They say, icon, could you put a price on? I said, I ain't selling nothing. These are my songs. Been in my bag. Got a satchel pack. Give me a chance. That's it, right? Carry the weight. No fragile bag. Fact the cap, that's a fact. Even my cap a snap a fact. Me and my gang like Rascal Flats. Graduated like tassel hats, back to back. I just been living life hey. in the bank roll. How the same go? Got it flooded to my ankles. Need a raincoat. Pair of boots and a dang bow. Gotta stay flow. I might pull up in a stagecoach playing Beethoven. Whoa, how you going off like that? Off white kicks and an off white hat. Ain't start like that, but them things just dirty. Lots to unpack like I just got back. I could say hi, but it's just too late. Bye bye, got a bird in the cinema. Live it up, clouds. That's when I kick it up, fill it up. What what tank ain't big enough? Eyes on me, so I. I gotta make a bag just to keep the lights on I'm on your desktop, I'm an icon They say icon, could you put a price on? I said I ain't selling nothing, these are my songs No way! Years had a setback, went back to the drum board, put the pen back, left that out by the bed where I slept that. Just in case I might forget that, and they don't get that. Hitting me up like you on text back. Real friends get it, I don't sweat that. Too busy trying to turn Jetta to an S class, get laughed. Turn a backpack to a jetpack, then I went past them. Funny how I went from plateau to platinum. Funny how I skipped my class and outclassed them. 
them. Funny how I'm last out, but I outlast them. But they ain't laughing now. Put them in the rocket one day. Do this for my family and my son's sake. I never complain. I just go uptake. Give me a shot and I tug it. No pumping. Listen close. What's it gonna be? You can sink or flow. We gon' find out when they miss the bow. Switch up the beat like a sickle mode. Hard drive full of these bullets. They know that it's loaded. They dealt me some bullets. You know I ain't folding. They see what I read and they know when I wrote it. I mean what I said and they know when I spoke it. I still got a ways to go. Learn from the grace. I'm taking some notes. Promise I got it. I'm taking an oath. Right popping up like I'm making some toast. Yeah. Do it my own way. Ain't no one telling me how I can move, okay? What's up, guys? What's going on? <clears throat> Let's see what's going on over here. All right, so I couldn't I couldn't get literally anything to work here, but I think we're good to go. Let me just double check here, make sure you guys are live with me, that you can hear me loud and clear. I appreciate the patience. Here we go. <clears throat> salute, salute. What's good? What's good, guys? All right, so got Ninja Affection with me. Gamers community, what's up? What's up, everybody? Let me know where you're plugging in from. Yeah, I was playing some some Connor Price, some Connor Price for y'all. Independent artist, he's been absolutely crushing it. So, you know, couldn't get the the gear going today. So the camera not looking super HD today. I know, pretty sad. Um, <laughs> but hey, we're still here. We're still going. We're cooking. I see we got Cali in the house, Texas, Argentina. I love to see it, love to see it. It's probably get a little trippy here. So let me go in and reposition this so it's not as as confusing. Um, honestly, guys, I have a lot going on. I have a lot going on for y'all here. Looking to really level up the, the streams on the Go Live platform, obviously, and then here with all of you right now. So... You know, going forward, usually I'm having at least one public session a week just to make sure, you know, there's a lot of people that are just aren't able to to plug in like they would want to. You know, life situations happen. Um, and so I want to be able to serve, you know, really anybody and everybody. But uh, there's a lot coming here. So, again, guys, this is open to everyone. So make sure you can send this around. 2 a.m. in Nigeria. Shout out to y'all for plugging in Nigeria I got AZ, Lagos, Arizona, DFW, California, Texas. I love it. I see a lot of amazing people on here. So let's dive. Let's dive right in. All right. So <clears throat> why am I hosting this session specifically today too? Look, guys, this is a very, very, very unique week. So what to expect today? Look, it is a combination of FOMC. I'm talking about federal funds rate and NFP all in the same week. So we're talking about two of the most volatile things that can happen in the market all in one, all in a matter of a three day span. So it's gonna get, it's gonna get volatile. It's gonna be really fun. And so I wanna make sure everyone's ready and you have the proper expectations. You can set the right foundation, I'm going to give you my perspective on what to expect with the market. On top of that, on top of that, you have these BOJ outlook reports. So here, if you guys haven't noticed, Japan, Japan's currency, the yen has been just, <laughs> it's just, it's had a tough time. It's had a tough time. And so there's conversations about what they're going to do what they're going to do here uh, to see, to make something happen, right? Make something happen. Uh, and there's some interesting things going on in the markets. And for those of you that trade smart money and have been doing that with me here for the last five years or so, you guys already know interesting things are lining up for the yen. So there's a lot of yen news. There's a lot of volatility to be expected to like tonight, literally tonight. And then we have pound news and dollar news and Canadian dollar news and more pound news. Whew. I mean, there's just a lot going on. 
So Chuckles, I'm in danger. Much love to everyone. I see Washington State. Let's go. Much love to everybody here. So I see y'all here plugged in, dialed in. I'm really interested to see. I don't think I've ever hosted a uh, a bigger stream. Usually we do everything through Zoom. I wanted to experiment here and also just keep it open to people. But I'm also curious to see how much more distracted people are just being on YouTube in general. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. It looks to me like these things... Um, they're a lot more distracting for people, especially because you're on your phone. So my recommendation for you would be to make sure you got this pulled up on your computer. Do not disturb so your focus dialed in because I guarantee you right now, you may be already looking at other things. You're already scrolling somewhere, somewhere else. So I'm just saying this is going to be epic. So let's get this started, guys. First things first, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat what exactly you're looking forward to this week. If there's specific pairs, uh, indices, if there's something that just speaks to you, if you're seeing, you know, oh, gold or silver have crazy setups, whether you have setups with EU or maybe the yens. And so I have a lot to cover. I have a tons to cover. We covered a little bit this morning on our live stream. Um, a couple of things we looked at NAS. Uh, we had a trade go and hit uh, TP earlier today, hit about a six and a half risk reward on that. Our silver cell is active. Euro NZD is bumping right now. Uh, we had a GBP JPY trade that we took this morning that actually just hit TP about 30 minutes ago. So I'm going to be looking all over all that. And then there's some new setups that I haven't quite triggered yet that I want to that I want to go over as well. So there's a lot. There's a lot to cover. And uh, I'm going to start kind of just based on what you guys got here. So let's see here. Whatever's the favorite, I'm going to... Oh, of course it's NFP. We got FOMC, NFP. It's been a year since that. Um, Pueden activar los subtítulos. I think so. BTC, gold. What's up, Dani? Good to see you, man. Hit me up. Got EU, gold, gold, gold. Yo, a lot of you trade gold and EU. So a lot of the majors holding us some on gold. Gold hits all the time, huh? Yeah, we have uh, opposing ideas. All right, so let's dive into it then. We'll, we'll, we'll start with gold. We'll start with the metals first, since it seems like a lot of you have um, interest in gold. Now, what I do want to go over when it comes down to metals, and this is so important. Look, guys, if you've been trading for a while, and let me know in the chat how long you guys have been trading for. I'm sure there's a, a totally different amount. But if you've been trading metals, and specifically if you've been trading gold, one of the most interesting things to me is this. And 99.9% .9 of traders and people who trade gold do this. And it, it's that they only look at gold. And if you trade gold and all you do is look at, you're probably like, what do you mean? Of course, if I trade gold, I should only look at gold. What are you talking about? And I'm not talking about DXY. So the number one thing that most people ignore is silver. Silver is the number one asset that most people constantly ignore. And the thing is, and what's really interesting is, there's so many people that trade gold, but they never look at silver. Now, let me know. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just like losing my mind. But you guys let me know. Let me know in the chat. If you trade gold, but you, you've never looked at silver in your life, let me know if I'm right. What's up, Miguel? Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. All right, so I see y'all three years, two years, six months, one year, three years, five years. Whew. Knowledge. Brazil, sick. Gold's cousin, never touched silver. Why should we look at silver? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Correlations. There you go. So I know some of you are, 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 are personal students of mine. You're plugged in pretty consistently. And so I'm going to tell you why. Now, when you're looking at... Let me go ahead and close this out so we have a smooth stream. When you're looking at gold and anything for that matter, you have to understand that the markets don't move independently. They move codependently. All of these assets move together. It's like a massive puzzle piece, right? You can't complete the jigsaw puzzle 
by just solving one, right? By just putting one piece in the right place. All of the pieces have to fit together nicely for you to solve the puzzle. So when it comes down to metals, for example, when it comes down to metals, you can't really know what gold's gonna do. You can't have a perfect understanding without taking a look at silver. And it's because these are correlated assets. And basically what happens is this, it's one can't really do something without the other and vice versa. So have, has anybody here ever had one of those moments where you know, you're about to trade, you have your perfect setup. You have your perfect signature setup and it just fails. And you're like, what the, f like, what the fuck is going on? Why didn't this work out? I'll give you, I'll give you a key example if I'm not, well, my bad. I'll give you a good example if I'm not mistaken here. And this was, um, this was in the beginning of, of the month. For those of you that remember, we took some swing buys on gold at the very, 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 very bottom, right? And, and this was called out for thousands of pips. And I said beforehand, hold this for a long time. Now, when the market was here, a lot of people were looking for buys and it failed. But why? And it's because silver had something it needed to do still. Vice versa. Actually, this is a better setup. A lot of people, especially people that were trading, um, that trade smart money concepts, people were looking to sell right here. And the reason being was they saw, and you can call it a million, a million different things, but basically most people had especially because a lot of you, I can, you told me you'd sell, you trade gold. So a lot of people saw a setup like this, and I'm going to wrap it all together and I'm going to give you guys my projections here in a second. But a lot of people saw, Hey, I'm going to sell gold once it hits here. And I don't, and it just kept going. It just kept pushing. What, why? Well, when gold was around this price action, this is like October 11th, Wednesday, October 11th. Well, when you looked at silver, silver had a long way to go because the same move that happened on silver here and gold, the same moves that pushed price up before this massive imbalance and lower lows, silver was so far behind. Silver had so much it needed to travel. So what did that do to gold? Since silver had to keep pushing, Gold kept going, and so silver kept going. And so days and days and days went by until right here, it finally got that reversal that we were waiting for. And so gold didn't respect that sell zone, which I know a lot of you saw. Gold didn't re respect this because silver needed to keep filling in balance and do the thing. And that's what happened right here. All right, silver got to this area 23, 30-ish. This didn't happen until Wednesday, 18th of October. Now look at gold. Gold just kept pushing. Everyone just kept getting destroyed. Didn't listen. Like gold just disrespected structure. But why? Silver wasn't done. That's it. And so when you look at the market now, as we've been trading metals like crazy, like it's, it's just been a fun ride. But now when we look at this, you have to realize that these are correlating pairs and they're going to play off of each other. And so sometimes the market needs to go a bit further or your trade might be invalid because there's just more that needs to be done with the other asset. So is silver the only thing we should look at when trading metals? Honestly, it's basically what I do the most for sure. Like, I don't really need it. Cena on harmonic, cool, silver and gold, two red pillars. So this is the big point. And with experience and with time and repetition, you guys are going to get a better hang of this. But, and I go over this every day, right? Every live stream, every morning, we're, we go over this literally for the last six years. But, so what can be expected? So let me give you guys a better, a better look at this. Now, why did here? So we see... This morning, literally this morning, silver went on a crazy run to the upside. Look at this. Silver pushed like crazy. Why? Why did silver go up so much? 
well, there was an open institutional buy up here. There was an open buy order that needed to be sold off. So if silver needed to go higher, now this is a trade from last week, this was already done, but if silver needed to go higher, what is that gonna do to gold? Guess what? It pushes gold higher too. So now, okay, let's, let's take a better look at this. So now I'm looking at current price action. What do we see? You guys are gonna see a downtrend. You're gonna see here a downtrending market. So that means that there's retail sellers all around this space. So what needs to happen? There's gonna be a bullish push. Now it may not happen instantly right now. This could go lower first. It could. <clears throat> What's up guys? Yin and yang vibes, sometimes. So what do you see here with silver? Silver is a similar situation. You see silver squeezing right now. Similar concepts. You see, and a lot of you will point out, you know, maybe you look at this like a flag, whatever it is, there's retail m money lining up all across this entire thing. And so in this example, is there a clear place for entries? Honestly, I don't really see them. I don't see the cleanest setups quite yet. I think we have a bit, we just need more price action, we need more structure, and that's fine. One of the things that you need to learn, and it took me years to really figure this out, was the market will give you some of the cleanest setups, but you just have to allow the market to give it to you. A lot of times we, we go and we start to execute things just because we think, because we're bored <laughs> and, and because we're impatient. But the reality is the market doesn't pay you more because you're in it more. I'll give you an example, easy example. You might trade 30 times in October. You may have traded 30 times in October and you won 10 trades, you lost 15, and you broke even the other five. Cool. Net, you might have done net 2% positive after all of that. Okay. Cool. That's, honestly, that's great. Or, and also, then there's the other trader who took one trade. That trader could also be up 2%. <laughs> like, that's just how it goes sometimes. That's literally how it goes sometimes. So there is no benefit of trading more or less, right? There really isn't. So I hope that makes sense to all of you here today. That perspective should be like, huh. <laughs> so more work doesn't really mean more money. Okay. Okay, cool. Maybe that just allow, you allow yourself to just let the market show you the best setups possible. All right, so... Gold and silver, not super conclusive quite yet, but it will be. Believe me that we will get more conclusiveness because you have FOMC, you have NFP, and even tomorrow we have 7.30 a.m. Central Time Dollar News. You'll have New York Open, which is an hour after that. And then 30 minutes after that, you'll have more USD News. So there's so much news it can't even fit on a screen. That's how much news there is. Can't even fit on the screen. So let's do this in sequential order. How about that? We looked at metals. Metals are not clean enough yet for to make an entry now or a prediction. What I do think could happen, just by looking at the market here, just by looking at some, some more, um, <clears throat> just by seeing a little more of this. Here's what I had, right? I was waiting for some cells on indices on metals. And we have a lot of imbalance here going into 21. And last week, you know, we, we really made a big push before the market uh, closed here. And it lost some momentum on Friday. Lost some momentum. Friday closed real bullish. So I'm curious to see what exactly happens now and where we can go. So on the live streams the rest of the week, Definitely stay tuned with silver because we, and, and gold because we could be getting ready for the shift in momentum 
that can bring us all the way down to at least 22, if not 21. I'm not convinced yet that we're there, but it's possible. It's possible. So just need more information. When I look at gold, all structure stays bullish. Everything is bullish right now. Literally everything. So no confirmations that we're ready for a swing sell yet. Right now it would just be basically waiting. Could we be ready for a buy somewhere? Not really. We have a lot of imbalance, so I think price will naturally get back down over here. But is there a conclusive place to t take a swing at a buy? No, can't do that either. So unfortunately with metals, I do think we're going to get really good risk to reward opportunities because the volatility has just been incredible time and time and time after again. Like the, the risk reward has been so good and you have to be conscious of when there's volatility in the market. So for example, we were able to catch these buys with metals because we understood basically from like 1900s to 1800s, it, it's very short lived most of the time. We knew that. Same thing with silver. Silver from basically 23.5 to, to tw under 21 never lasts very long. We dropped here in a few days. We came back up in 10 days too. So knowing that you're playing in volatile areas, it'll allow you to extend your risk to reward in a super responsible way. Because the issue with trading for a lot of people, what starts to happen is people start to trade and they want the you know 10 risk reward, 25, 100, but it just it might not be the right market conditions. So let's let's we have to be in the right market conditions. Well, guess what? We have FOMC, NFP, and the yen is looking like it wants to do some crazy things this week. So why don't we look at those and then take advantage of the volatility there? A lot of people, what they do is they fear. They fear volatility. But if you're trading with us, if you're learning how to be more in, to realize what you're really in control of and what you're not, it'll make this a lot easier for you. Because at the end of the day, our approach to the market on the technical side, the news doesn't invalidate anything. The news just accelerates our perspective. That's it. So then, so because the way we look at the market is based on understanding that this whole thing is orchestrated and there's narrative that happens in these markets. And so we're basically looking to read through the matrix, but of money, right? If you've never seen the matrix, I highly encourage you to do so. What up guys? Yo, let's hit a hundred on this stream. What's up? What y'all think? A hundred on this stream. <clears throat> so, yeah, we hit 100 on the stream, and I'll, I'll give away a, a trading journal for sure, for sure. So I'll just keep a look out here. Y'all let me know if we hit 100. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. So what happens here? Look, guys, the yen. Now, before I actually dive into the pairs, let me show you what the Japanese yen currency index looks like. Now, if this was your currency, how would you feel? Maybe, maybe I have some Japanese on here right now, but maybe not. <clears throat> but if this was your currency, how would you feel about the state of, um, of your money right now? It looks like the dollar, does it? That's weird. I feel like the dollar looks kind of the opposite. Hmm. We're almost there, Milo. Appreciate you. I would be moving elsewhere. Okay, so this is just the value of the currency, right? This is a representation of that. So, okay. Now let's look at something here. Now last year, <clears throat> right around these times, we had hit this price. So October of 2022, 
the week of 17th of October 2022, we'd actually been here. Then we rallied. Okay. Market really started to push up. Things were looking good. Okay. All right. Got a comeback going. You know, literally across quarter four of, of 2022, pff, bullish, let's go. And then it even made a high. It even made a high. Problem with that high was it didn't last very long. Hmm. Quick push up here, price immediately came back and down we went. So something happened here, and this is why there's a giant blue zone right here that I've drawn for y'all. And what happened here was there was a very intentional push down before the market recovered. And that's what I want to investigate with all of you. Looking at this right now, we might be here for a minute. We hit 100, let's go. All right, someone's gonna win. Someone's gonna win this here. And in 10 minutes, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna do the giveaway. <clears throat> if we hit 150, I'll do another giveaway. So, so cool, what happened here? Peep this, all right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> So why, why is this relevant? Remember, everything that we see and, and look at here in the marketplace, everything here tells a story. And it's a story between retail traders and the ones who really have power over how the market moves. We hit 100. Let's go. Good stuff, good stuff guys. Well done. Well done. <clears throat> so what happens here? Now, let's take a look at what happened. We have Friday, October 21st, 2022. The yen, the Japanese index, my bad, the index here, it opens. And on this open, it tanked. It just, it just opens way down here. So completely tanks. So it gaps down heavy, this is heavy panic here. The market quickly kind of recovers and then off it goes. So what happens here is that they open, they intentionally drop the yen currency index. They drop this like crazy before it recovers and moves forward. So for an entire year, for an entire year, it held this in drawdown. So fast forward now, this is in around 66.50. So all right, let's fast forward now. <clears throat> so now we get back into the same zone. The same zone, we're now over here again. Okay, what do we see? What do we see here? Now we're in a valid range. Anywhere in this gray zone that we're in right now, it could reverse. And guess what happens? Yep, just last week, guess what? The market does what? It tanks downwards before it comes back up. So now this rips all anyone who is in buys, all these retail buyers, bodied on this drop, and then the market continues. So what do I expect? Personally, I think we work our way back down. I think we work our way back down. And once we get back over here, then I do think we can rally. So that's what I think we have happened here. And this is now, I think we're basically a pullback away from seeing the JXY, the yen's currency index pump. But we need a pullback first. And that's why I have an alert down here. So we really need to see price get down here. So what does that mean? Well, when you go and you look at all of these yen pairs, you're gonna see some interesting movement. So what I think is that the yen weakens one more time, heavy drop, before it rallies. Now if you take a look, everything trades against the yen. There's, the yen is only on the right side of these pairs. So what does that mean? That means if the, if the yen gets stronger, so first it's gonna get weaker, then it gets stronger, that means that price could go up with all of basically every currency. We should see things go up before they go back down. 
And that's what I'm looking for here. <clears throat> it better. <laughs> Yo, you're up, man. You should, it's, it's late for you. Um, so that's what I see happening. All right, so let's dive into it then. So look at this, right? We, we talked about this on the live stream. Remember, we're streaming every single mo every morning, literally every single morning, we're live together. So USC JPY is a pretty good reflection of the index currency, the, the yen's currency index. Same thing here, 17th. It's literally just the opposite. So we talked about this zone, and I said, guys, I'm, gonna be, I'm looking to sell UJ in this zone but I need to see a smaller time frame distribution. How many of y'all were on that with me? All right, y'all saw it happen. Guess what? It tanks without doing that. Happens sometimes. So what are we waiting for now? Well, we're waiting for that to happen somewhere. <laughs> we're waiting for, for that distribution to show up. We haven't gotten it quite yet. So, but here's the thing. Remember, <clears throat> I think the yen, the index here, this needs to tank. This needs to tank first. This drops. What does that do? That should push dollar yen a little bit higher before it drops. Is there a key setup here that I see that's valid? To be honest, no. I don't see it with clarity. Not with USD JPY. If some of you do, let me know. I don't. Now let's look at NZD JPY. Do we see a clean setup here for the same thing? Is what would happen if 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 I think the yen can go down before it goes up? Then what would this do? This would go up before it comes down. There's not many key setups here. Now I am in a GBP JPY buy. Just I'm in this right now. Nothing new. Here for those of you that weren't on the live stream this morning, here's a key setup. You guys literally the setup is what I take constantly. What did we see happen? We saw the market spike downwards, eliminated retail buyers, gave us a higher high. Structure was up here for a while, spiked right back down. Once the spike back down, mitigated this huge sell, market has been pushing. Right now, just reached that three to one. All right, so bag secured here. <clears throat> Now, why did I take this buy? Check this out. We had EJ and GJ. These were the only ones that had a bullish structure that stayed in its range. Everything else broke below. CHF JPY made lower lows. CAD JPY briefly made lower lows. And if we're looking at setups, for possible sells here because there's you know there's a lot of yen news coming specifically like now sometime here in the near future again let's just take a quick look at literally all of this hold on all of this here these reports madness should be coming sometime soon right so this report comes out it's the session is live right now. This could happen during this session, for all I know. And this could happen right now. And so, <clears throat> so here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Is there anyone in Asia right now? Is there anyone in Asia that's on the stream right now? I just, I, I just realized what I'm going to do. Let me know here in the chat. I'm going to be giving away my journal, <clears throat> my trading journal. Whoever's in Asia right now, first person to speak up. Y'all not better not lie. I'll be so sad if, you're, if you turn out to be lying. So right now, clean setup. We have equal highs. Price spikes above, clears these retail sellers. Price comes crashing down gets below this low the one thing that I do not like 
is that price didn't stay below these lows very, very long. It was actually really brief. Came down, just quickly came back up. Now we are seeing some pretty vol some, it's, it's, the market's definitely trending and we'll pull back from this, but you know. Can't hear you, really? <clears throat> you guys can't hear me? You're playing. You should be able to. Man, is there no one? All right, all right. Y'all tripping, man. Don't trip me out in this chat. <clears throat> so let's see if there's a better opportunity than this one. Could there be a better setup that where price actually finds more stability and maybe is a little bit more delayed on its, on its bullishness? Because that's what I want to sell. I want to sell whatever's going to get to its point of interest last. So, for example, CAD JPY right now is basically at I think it's 618 pullback at the moment, right around there between 50 and 618. Is there another setup that's valid that could look to get there? I'm looking at everything else. Hmm. I don't think so. Maybe odd JPY. And is this might be a better sell. We saw a price from right here start to push to the upside before it came crashing back down. So again, this is a lesson on correlations divergence. Look at this. This is way down here. This has got a long way to go. So if I'm going to look to sell one of these, preferably it's going to be either odd JPY. We saw price come down. We see it go below here. Price honestly found some stability at these lower levels or CAD JPY. Honestly, I'm actually leaning more towards odd JPY on this range. However, we also we want to keep in mind higher time frames. So CAD JPY has just been bearish. Bearish, super bearish. Odd JPY, kind of choppy. So let's see what happens by the time price gets into this zone. What I'm gonna do is this. I'm actually gonna share. I'm gonna share my screen. Stable the whole time. All right, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send my chart here. And I'm gonna split screen these two because these are the two that I think have the 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 best chance of of setting up for sales. <clears throat> so it's gonna be one of these two. And the confirmation for me for a sell is gonna be basically whichever one gets to the zone of interest last, that's the one I'll be selling. So that's why I have an alert close to price so that I can see here. As of right now, it looks like it could be on JPY, but a lot of things can change. A lot of things can change. New York session can come along and just totally switch up the whole the whole damn thing. So let's look at this. Again, one thing, right? I'll make a note of it here actually in the ch on the chart so that it's easy to remember. <clears throat> I'll be selling whichever pair reaches the POI last. All right, right here. <clears throat> Cool. There it is. Here's a chart. I'll go ahead and I'll share it in the chat too. Whenever I'll leave this in the, um, let's see we go. It's odd JPY versus CAD JPY. I'll leave this in the description too. <clears throat> Perfect. So there's literally no one in, in near Asia, right? All right. 
That's fine. No big deal. We'll do this. So here's what I'm waiting for. All right. You guys have it now with the yen. Let's go to the next thing. What's the next cat? Canadian dollar news. So we have some Canadian dollar news, New York session. Do I have a Canadian? All right. Do I have a Canadian in the chat? <clears throat> they, someone asked, where do I get in? Honestly, if it's CAD JPY, where I've seen resistance before, I'm going to take that, 108.30-ish. If it gets to odd JPY, I'll probably take it closer to 95.45-ish. So one of the two. All right, let's get back to one screen here. Let's look at some Canadian pairs real quick. I didn't see any setting up earlier today. And my thought process was that Canadian news for tomorrow will probably shake up the market to create an opportunity to wait for. Right now, I didn't really see anything. Yes. Tej, is that you? Tej, if you're Canadian, hit me up on Instagram, and I will send you a my, person, my trading journal um, template to you for free. <clears throat> I got you, I got you, I got you. It's the winner, I said I was gonna, right? So, let's see here. I'm looking at these numbers, 92 live, okay, cool. I think that's right. All right, let's hit 100 again, and I'll do another giveaway. Okay, so do we have any setups here with these Canadian pairs? I'm feeling you know, I feel in the spirit of, of giving here. So, okay, interesting. Hmm. Odd cat looks actually kind of nice. Like we swept these highs. The market's been ranging quite a bit. I'd say all this sideways movement. We could, we could be seeing a sell, massive sell, but better than this better than this push here because i'll have to take a look at the other pairs one of the things that i do notice here with odd cat is this right here we saw a massive push down on friday so friday pre-new york session in the middle of london session we really see the canadian dollar spike down before just popping off so there definitely is a, a little bit of there's definitely an intentional sell-off here, liquidating buyers. It's still some equal low, so eh, not my favorite, before the market runs. Now here, regardless, we see that the market pushes higher, clears out these highs, then immediately comes back down. So this definitely lures out retail sellers, traps retail buyers. The typical break and retest setups here, they get crushed. And so now, yeah, I mean, I think we could see some sells here. Again, I won't really give you any conclusive setup yet. I want to take a look at the rest of the market, the rest of the Canadian dollar pairs before we can take some, some cleaner setups. But Oddcat could be setting up for some opportunities. Give us your live account. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I got you. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, you know, just, just shoot me a message. I'll, I'll just actually... I'll just I'll just fund you my entire bank account. Let me just I'll just send that over to you. Yeah. For sure. <clears throat> Can we do some for Africans in the house? <laughs> Mexico next. Hey, I'm just I'm just rolling with whatever account happens here. So CAD CHF looks like a, we got a pretty big spike here on the open. I don't know if that's actually real. So Here's some advice for you guys. If you see a really big spike in the market and it's near like the opening of a new trading day, always double check it with other feeds. So for example, here this one says as the FXCM feed. So if I go look at CAD CHF somewhere else on another data feed, am I gonna see that spike? Well, not with the Wanda. So what does that show me? That, CAD, that FXCM spiked out a ton of money there Look at this, forex.com, I didn't do that either. So clearly, 
um, this data feed uh, for that moment just print it just showed the wrong information. Um, so they, they you know <laughs> it took out a lot of people. So cool. With that being said, guys, Cat CHF. It's not really much going on over here. Odd CAD already looked at. CAD JPY. So this is CAD, right? We talked about. CAD could go up before it comes down. Odd CAD. Okay. Anything else here? Euro CAD. Mm. I mean, again, similar situation as Odd CAD, right? Euro CAD takes definitely a huge, huge push down before the market reverses. So this, we actually traded EuroCAD last week and we had a nice sell on go live, on the live streams for, for the members. Like we, we took a nice swing at this. Took a good sell right here. It actually ended up going way, way, fat, way beyond uh, the exit. But, so okay, cool. Now we have EuroCAD and OddCAD. Which one makes more sense to trade? As of right now, as of right now, if you were to go and we look at OddCAD, sitting at that 38.2 right now, and we look at EuroCAD, sitting well, well, way up here, which one of these two has a better chance of staying inside of this structure? What do you guys think? Which one of the two? All right, let's see here. Let's see, CAD. Hmm. ECAD, let's go. You know what, man? I got you. Chaley X, you two hit me up. I'll send you one too, bro. Or bro at, I guess, I don't know. I got you, shoot me a DM. All right, so yeah, EuroCAD. EuroCAD makes more sense. It's got a longer way to go, so the chances of this staying within the structure not wicking you out are better as of right now. It could change. It definitely could change. But right now, I would I would definitely lean with EuroCAD for sure. So here's the setup. Where would I take this? Where would I take this setup? <clears throat> well, let me show you here. I look at this, and I want to look at where we've seen support before. Prior to the to the push down, we had some equal lows over here. We had some lows, some support, strong levels. Then it spiked it all down. So when you see this here, support, 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 you can see that there was definitely retail buyers right there. Tons of money. And it's gone. So the push down to here is exactly where I would, I, where I would be looking for some buys. Right where we've seen some support before, great place for us to see some reversals again so right right around this 1.45 75 ish looks like a good zone to me so something like this let me narrow down this stop loss to like right there to the low and then the great thing is you can get a great risk to reward just staying inside of the range like the market doesn't even have to go very far you can hit a three to one and the market's not even it's barely going up anything. You can hit a two to one and this is like nothing. So it's really like the, this is really good probability. If you can take a trade and exit within the same 15 minute range, your probabilities of exiting this is, are pretty good. If you have to go hit a higher high in your structure, obviously the further the market has to go, the harder it gets. So five to one, still within the range. I mean, this, to me, you guys obviously, you know, take your exit, whatever is your plan, but this is just what I would do. So here's EuroCAD as well. I 
I got you, homie. I got you. <clears throat> okay. I haven't even gotten to the majors yet. Oh, my God. We're going to be here for a lifetime. Fuck. Y'all don't even want to be here for that long. I mean, there's no way. We haven't even gotten to, to the majors. All right. Let me move faster here. We're going to be here forever. CAD. That's basically it. Here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. I would not be selling USD CAD. Here's why. There is so many, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many retail sellers right now in this thing. Oh my God. They're going to get destroyed. I don't see long term. I don't see this going very well for sellers on USD CAD. By the end of the week, I just don't see this work now. And here's the thing too, like USD CAD has been pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. It's finally giving sellers like, and I, <laughs> like it's giving sellers a chance right now. It's like, oh yeah, no, just, it's gonna keep coming down. It's a lot of money sitting right here. A lot of sellers since Friday, all of Monday, Sunday's session, you know, like the first troll trading day, it's just, yeah, sell it off, sell it off. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, but I don't see this surviving FOMC. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Kev put three dots. Kev, are you in a cell? I don't know which Kev this is, but the dots are like, uh, I'm in cells, bro. Don't say that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't say that. <laughs> you don't say that. Uh, all right. So I wouldn't stay in USD CAD cells. But that's just me, though. Cool, we can move on. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, the major pairs. Yes, that means we're gonna talk about everything having to do with the dollar, including indices as well. So DXY, well, let's zoom out a little bit. We flushed out a lot of cells up here before the market traded away, we've been We've been selling the dollar, so it's been good. I think we do have further to go. We, we should come back down to this 105.60 range. Should get there eventually. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen right now. So what can I be expecting now? All right, what's, what's the play, as they would say? Well, there's a lot of imbalance up here. So how and when we get up here, I'm not sure. But with the DXY, just which is, this is a reflection of mainly Euro USD, USD CAD, GBP USD, USD CHF, USD JPY. This is a reflection of those things. So this doesn't create those things. Like this doesn't influence the pairs. The pairs influence the DXY. So what that means is, Use this to have a general reference of where the dollar can go, but this shouldn't be your like entry point trigger. This is just a, for you to have a general idea. So I think the dollar will go up over time. And then once it's in this zone over here, so once we're kind of in this area, then I'll be more looking at major pairs and seeing, okay, what makes sense to, what, what makes sense to sell the dollar? I hope that makes sense. Send a message on IG. Cool. Sounds good. So, perfect. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is actually an old setup. I still have it drawn up here, but this is an old idea. And the reason I, I wasn't looking to take this anymore was because of what happened here on Friday. So, Friday, price sold from here. And AUD USD dropped about, about 38 pips or so from the zone that I had marked up here. So now the buy, the what I would call an institutional buy, this is about 40-ish pips. And then the sell was just about the same thing. And so I'm like, you know what? The exchange from buys to sells, it looks like it happened already. So I wasn't looking to get, like this is something that I'm not in at all. And even if I was, I mean, I guess we would be up a little bit, but it just isn't something that I'm trading because I just don't know where the money would come from 
to push price down. And same thing, we can look at NZD USD, and this is the main reason why I was done with it. Well, we had an NZD USD sell that we were waiting for last week, which was you know shared on the live stream on Go Live, and this pushed up about 26 pips. Well, guess what? NZD USD Friday, New York session, it show it literally just like kisses the zone and just <laughs> drops. And yeah, this tanks 30, almost basic, a little over 40 pips. So the reversal, the exchange from buyers to sellers, it's a wrap. It's done. It's, it's a wrap. So from here, that's what we had. And I mean, it missed my my entry by like five pips or so. Nothing I can do. But once once I saw that, that was the okay, cool. This already did its thing. So when it comes down to AU and NZD USD, both of these, we already got our move, and that's it. That's it. So I'm not looking for anything extra here, staying out of this. Um, now, to give you something to actually pay attention to, to give you you know more of what you want, which might be setups or understanding the market better. Yo, let me let me, let me know if someone's learned something. Y'all learned something today? Did anyone here like get some value that you're like, how is this even free right now? <clears throat> he's like, dude, he's giving away too much sauce, bro. So cool. This to me looks like the, one of the cleanest setups, which is Euro USD. Now, <clears throat> here to hear what we see. And this has played out a few times now, so this is playing off actually too nicely. Which is you guys ever think about that? Like this this looks too clean. Anyone ever get suspicious, like, hmm, this looks too perfect of a setup. I don't know how I feel about this. Learning. Perfect. Amazing. So here's what happens here. From here, when price comes down, this happened during London session, this pushes down to one fill in balance to rebalance the market, and two, to eliminate retail buyers from the zone. So anyone who was buying at support, gone. Then the market rallies, we get a higher high. Most importantly though, we create stability above this previous high, and we trade here for hours. So we've been trading above the previous high for well over 15 hours. That to me is a great confirmation of a bullish structure. So good, good stuff there, super good. The moment we're looking at this and we see here, I mean, I got ways to go. We're not even at a 38.2 right now, you know, whatever. Now, hold on. I'm seeing some volatility at a strange time with this. So that means that I wonder if that yen news went down. Give me a sec here. Did they drop the yen news already? <clears throat> Let's see. No, this is all chilling for the most part. DJ came down a little bit. All right. Never mind. So, okay. Anyways. So, here's a zone that makes a lot of sense to me. It looks very clean. Swipe the lows, working its way. So, Euro USD looks very good. Very, very good. I would wait for an entry over here. Actually, right around where I have support, this is what I'd be waiting for. So here it is. Guys, this, this, will, this will be the only session I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do um, on live session on YouTube this week, at least in English. So, you know, enjoy, I guess. So at least something like this is what I'm seeing. Three to ones look pretty probable. I like I like the the risk to reward, trading inside the range. Even if we like want to mark a flip structure or, or trend, probably should play out. But let's take a look at GBP USD as well, because GBP USD gave a very similar setup. Take a look at this. GU here had equal lows. So my bad. Let me close this up. GU here. This missed my entry by so little. Last week, yo. 
Who who here drop drop um drop some nines in this chat if you were if you traded with me last week. We um thankfully it was a great week regardless, but I think we missed five different setups by five pips or points or less. It was like EuroCAD, uh, Euro USD, which was a melt. What else was it? GBP USD. Mm, there was a couple. Man, it was just like, oh, well, we missed another one by a pip. We missed another one by a pip. It was wild. Um, what's up, Fabiola? What's good, homie? It's been a minute. <clears throat> First time watching. I like your style. Hey, much love. Too much sauce. Last time it happened around 8.30 PST, but it was so random. It might be at the same time. I even joined the Spanish sessions. That's so funny. All right, cool, cool. So, so yeah, last week it happened a lot, and that's okay. One of the biggest, one of the biggest issues with, um, with trading, and I'll pull up a chart again. I'll, let me just get into a little monologue for you with y'all for a second. That doesn't look good. There we go. So, I think this is it. Yeah, we'll do it like this for a second. So one of the things right now <clears throat> that I will say. Um, when you feel like you've missed something, that's when things tend to go wrong. So when you feel like the market owes you because you missed by a pip or two, because it waked you out, those are one of the most vulnerable time periods as a trader because you feel like you just lost something that you were supposed to have. And I say this because... Um, Obviously, I've experienced it a lot. And really watch your emotions. Watch your emotions during those times because as soon as you feel like it's it's not like you even lost anything. Maybe it feels like you lost opportunity, but like that's when you're most vulnerable. Focus on that point. Because what can happen is then you go and look for an entry that's not there. You go and look for an idea or a process and you're forcing it. You want the market to pay you to give you what you thought you earned, but it wasn't yours in the first place. And plus, there's unlimited setups. Like, uh, guys, I've been trading since 2015. Um, basically, every day there's going to be something. And even if there's not, you're not here to trade day for day. You're not here to trade by day. Day by day by day. No, no. Just let the setups come. So I wanted to go into that because I do think it's worth note, noting because last week, the reason we still had a good week last week was because when those trades missed, it wasn't like we were attacking the market to get anything back. It was just, okay, that's fine. Like, There's other setups and when those appear, okay, we'll take those too. So the market doesn't owe you anything ever and just keep that really... Keep that dialed in, all right? So, I'm low in voice. Oh, my bad. My bad, my bad. I was a little bit further from the mic, I guess. <clears throat> um, hold up. Cool. So, going back at this. So, you missed my whole monologue. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's dive into what, what went down over here. So we see that there's definitely imbalance here with GBP USD, and this liquidates a whole bunch of retail um, buyers. So anywhere over here, it's looking like a good time. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Let me check something real quick. When I switched over to here, now the audio is still the same. Hold up. <clears throat> okay, this should naturally be better now. Cool. So what I when I see this, it looks very similar to Euro USD. What I'm waiting for now, and I'll place alerts around the points of interest, is basically that pullback again, just like we went over with AUD JPY and CAD JPY. I want to see which one's more likely to get to the zone last. And that's all I'm gonna focus on. So what I'll do is I'll split screen these two. 
because things can change and we don't really know which one could be the the one so let me zoom out real quick <clears throat> and we'll focus on the setup like this so again at the end of the day, like I said, you could use a fib tool, whatever, whatever makes sense to you, but you can use that. And uh, what I'm looking for is to take whichever one gets to the zone last. So especially like right into this, like EU has to get down a lot further than than, than GU. So I do, I'm leaning towards Euro USD for the to, for this to be the setup, but EU could happen. And here's the main reason why. GU gave us a high above the previous high for like an hour, maybe two hours. Euro's been chilling up here for a minute. So the fact that GU could barely even sustain above this high, honestly, with that being said, and this is the, the beauty of going into more depth, GU isn't even worth it. Because here's the high, here's a low. This couldn't even give us a higher high for more than an hour. The intention behind this push up I don't think is to give create a bullish structure, in my opinion. This is to lure in buyers, breakout buyers, to liquidate sellers. That's what I think what the intention is. That's the, the whole thing. Guys, remember, all of these candles is just a different type of language. They don't speak, the candles don't speak in words, they speak, but intentions, that does never lie. Think. I want you to really actually focus on what I just said, okay? Candles can't speak in words, but intentions never lie. So learning how to read the intention behind movements, that is super powerful. Because that's the narrative. That's all we're seeing here. It's like, all right, what, what does this really mean? What does this really mean? So GU... Fact that this high was so brief compared to EU, which is still above the previous high. GU is not. EU is. This tells me Euro's a much better, has a higher probability of winning. Again, nothing's for sure ever. So it's not like I'd risk the whole thing on this, you know? Keep it keep the risk consistent. But <clears throat> that would be the setup. Here it is. Euro USD. Cool. Yo, I'll take this moment for my first YouTube type of thing, which is subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, you should do that. Do the YouTube thingies, you know? Click the buttons. All right, so EU, y'all got that. UK, like I mentioned, I think I don't think this is going to last very long. These these highs over here, this this downtrend. USCCHF is it's a little it's too choppy for me. Like I could I could see some cells, but it's just not worth it. Yen's popping up again. <clears throat> metals are squeezing. What I will say is this: that metals will have an explosive week, and then it's like, well, no duh, it's FOMC and NFP. But even if we had no idea about news events, look at the way this is squeezing and squeezing and tightening. Similar situations, this either can go down than up or up than down. Don't guess. Let the market show you what it wants to do first. How do you know where to enter in these scenarios? Already did. Appreciate y'all. Can you look at oil? Yeah, yeah, we'll look at oil. So in the scenario like Euro USD, one, I actually literally wrote where I would enter, which is right here, like right around 1.0557. This is exactly where I would take my entry. And I base mine off of the last points of supply. So I think that support levels, there's, I think they're still relevant, but only after the money has been liquidated. I still think those are good reversal zones. Sometimes they miss and they just place off the open. Uh, let's see here. We literally went over everything. Oh my God. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Same thing with silver. Squeezing. Can't, can't really tell you where it's going to go. And then we had, oh, look at that. Fed off of these levels. 
So oil is moving interesting. Oil just swept these lows real deep and then pushed further. Cool. So let's dive into that. We saw oil here at 12.15 central time. I think this is in central time. Yeah, central time. And we saw oil swipe a lot of money. Now let me look. Let me know. Can you guys confirm you have this on same similar data feeds since yours? But it should be similar. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. So this clears a lot of um, buyers. Instant retail buyers get bodied. Market comes up. Doesn't give us highs though. Hmm. I would want to sell to buy this on a pullback. I would want to buy this, but I need a shift in structure first, and I'm, we're not getting it yet. This was a, this this was another one. Oh, you know how I said last week we missed a couple ideas by like a little bit. This was another one of those. This missed by literally like a hair, and the market went crazy. But didn't trigger didn't trigger my entry. Could have played a little bit higher. But that's okay. So yeah, it's a little early. I want to wait for highs before anything. I think with the pullback it could reverse, but it's not worth me risking money to just because of a, a kind of a hunch, kind of a feeling. Yeah, that's all right. Like there's so much. We already went over so much where it's like I don't need this trade. This is um, natural gas. <laughs> now we could go. We can. I can zoom out and give you more of a macro look at this. Um, and we did see that shift in momentum here on oil right over here. Market pulled back, just just played off of this zone and then gone. I think we go back over here and get another big sell off, but uh, we're we got some time. We got some time. But if we look at this big picture, a lot going on over here. Natural gas has been steady squeezing and, and going for a bit. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever traded this before. I definitely have not. But I just added this to the watch list because it looked interesting to me. Like, imagine the whole year you're just moving kind of sideways. It's still up a good amount, but this thing, this thing. December 2022 just drops. Natural gas drops like 70%. That's wild. Like that's that's kind of crazy. But is it even surprised? Where did it come? Look at this. You know where it went to? It went to, yeah, you, you know where it went to. You already know these COVID levels, man. It went to the COVID levels. The COVID files. So played off of here, you know, we saw, we, we traded off of this price, filled some imbalance, and then the market uh, went and um, we got some accumulation. Good old accumulation right now. I think we'll work our way further down again. So yeah, we got to these pandemic levels and then um, price rallied. Crazy coincidences there. Super crazy. Who would have thought? Um, but with natural gas, and here's the thing too. If you've never traded something like this, don't fear it. It trades just like everything else. Just use the proper lot size calculator. Make sure that you put in the right uh, asset, <clears throat> asset. Make sure that your contract sizes are proper. So if you're looking at like, again, if you're looking at trading oil, for example, right? Um, or in this example, natural gas, like what? So if you're looking at trading something like this, I don't even know if it shows up on here. XNG, maybe it shows up differently. Well, hmm. you know what? I think I'll have to do a little bit more research because I've literally never traded um, 
natural gas. So one of you guys could let me know if you want on what this looks like. But either way, the setup looks pretty pretty valid. We saw this clear these highs, liquidates them immediately, comes back, pull back over here, which could probably send us even further. Peso. I hope somebody took advantage of these ideas, man. Especially, I got some Mexicans in the chat. Yo, I told y'all were here. Uh, where can you learn? Just yeah, just shoot me a message, David. How my G message me here? I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Um, here you go. Shoot me a message there on Instagram. Like and subscribe. What a guy. Um, but my Mexicans, y'all really like. We talked about the the mitigation here, the accumulation. We had secondary entries too. And then this last one, we couldn't get in there. The market just left, it just dipped out. We probably won't see these prices for years. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, the recovery has been brutal. All of 2023 has been recovered. We were in, I think we were in Tulum, Nancy and I were in Tulum where like the, the, the peso was just bodying the dollar, dude. Everything cost so much more than usual, it sucked. Um, and so coming back, going back again is going to be nice. Because it's a difference. Like, it actually makes a difference. You know, like, you, right now, the peso has, the dollar has gotten over about 10% on the peso again. So, like, makes a difference. The, those conversions, those conversions make a difference. Believe that. Fierro pariente, compadre. Y'all are funny. Oh, that was that David Fryson who asked about the entry rules and the whole strategy. Yeah, yeah. I'll walk you through it. I'm running a promo right now. If you want to learn with me, you guys just let me know. I'll let y'all. Y'all get a little YouTube discount. <laughs> YouTube discount with your boy. But, okay. Bitcoin. What do you guys think? What y'all think? Does it go up first or does it come down? So here's the question. Can I make polls in the chat? Is that possible? I don't know how to do those things. I don't know if I can do those yet. I need to get more advanced with my, my streaming knowledge and technology. But do you guys think we hit 39,000 first? Or do we hit 30,000 first? What do you guys think? Drop a 39,000 in the chat if you think that's what we hit first. Drop a 30,000 in the chat if you think that's what's gonna happen first. Let me know. Curious to see what you think. Some of you think it'll drop. Okay. What's up, Josh? Maximiliano, to the moon, but which moon direction? Bruh. Very political response, Bobic. 39K, okay. About to go higher, okay. 40K, okay. So Africa, Africa is like, yo, this is going up, man. Trust. David says 39, 39. All y'all are saying 39 first. Like everybody. I haven't seen a 30 drop yet. Oh, no. So if everyone here is thinking it's going to 39, then it's got to go to 30, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> now my next question for everyone is, do you have a confirmation for an entry, though? Do you have a confirmation to be in the market to take the trade in a specific direction? So right now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, you know, this is squeezing and this has been squeezing, guys. And what are the chances that this squeezes right into a nice FOMC move? What are the chances that this squeezes right into an, NF, uh, an FOMC move? What's up, Samira? To the galaxy. I think we'll go high and then drop. I think you might be right. So, six weeks ago, we had a FOMC as well. This is uh, sitting right over here. This was the previous FOMC. Wednesday, September 27th, if I'm not mistaken. 
and I went in on my go live sessions on in like our in our private ones. Uh, there's I left a recording there on how the dollar and federal fund rates, how that all plays together, and what the market tends to do, and how influential the market is. But take a look at this federal funds rate. If you look at the previous one, September twentieth. Oh my bad, I was one week off. September twentieth, twenty twenty three. Here we go. September 20th, 2023. There we have it. This was setting up right before the market. This pushed the market down one more time before from 26 we came up to here. Literally since the last federal funds rate, we are about 30% above that price. 30%. Hmm. Interesting. Real, real interesting, if you ask me. Now, let's look at what we had over here. I look at price in the past, and we had stalled around 34 and change before. Not a lot, though. But this has been a key level uh, during winter of 2022. But oftentimes we like to kind of break through these, so it doesn't tend to last very long. <clears throat> so I do think we're gonna go into 39.40. But let's see what happens. And here's another reason why I think this is a possibility. When I look at ETH, ETH is way behind. Way, way, way behind. Like these levels that Bitcoin wants to hit here from May 2022, ETH is so far. ETH hasn't even hit like, I know, it's, it's, this has got a lot more to go. So I'm mindful to what's happening here. I don't have an entry, but I do think we can push, especially because this has been running and running. There's a lot. There's a lot of people looking to sell this right now, um, especially after how aggressively it went up. I don't think it'll hold. I think we may spike downwards before we push, but not too deep. Thirty-three ish, and then go. So I think FOMC is going to be that fun that the market needs here. Uh huh. Okay. So <clears throat> let's um. Let's wrap things up here, I think. Uh, I didn't get into the euro or the pound, but I mean, there's just so much we can do. There's a lot, man, there's a lot. But um, when you look at US 30, you know, we had the US 30 close on Friday. Uh, very, very, very bearish. Weekly close down here. And then today, today just instantly was bull run. Instantly. So I'll ask you all the question. I'll leave you with this. I bet 76 right now. Bro, you wildin'. All right, but okay. So let's let's think about this. And this is I'll leave you all to to let me know what you think. I'm not gonna tell you what I think. Tomorrow morning, remember every morning we're live together, and Sundays too. Sundays always mindset trading, mindset psychology, the foundation of everything. And then Monday through Friday we have an English and a Spanish session, live together every single day. Like, I'm literally doing this every day. But my question for everyone is this. Friday drops aggressively and closes all the way down here. The next trading day, which is Sunday and Monday, gaps up and immediately recovers this whole thing. What does that mean? What does this mean? actually mean is this a lower low what's going on should i be selling what's the meaning of this hmm so 
We'll look at indices because we that's what we actually trade together every morning is indices. We're trading these indices live every single morning. Um, but what I will say is this, every chart that I sent over here in the chat so far, um, I'm gonna put them all together and then what I'm gonna do is in the description on this live stream, I'll put them in order, I'll organize them for you guys. And then I'll also, I'm gonna timestamp all of this. So if you wanna go back and take a look at this and see whatever it is that I went over, I'll timestamp them so you guys can just go to the to the analysis of the the currency pair or the metal or the index or whatever whatever we did. And that way you guys can just have a better look at that. Um, but indices, we'll go over tomorrow. I went way over, way, way over what I planned on doing today. Um, but yeah, we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Appreciate everyone that plugged in here on the live session. It was fun. I had a blast. It's like I love, I love doing this. I feel a little bit more um, kind of, you know, it's a little more chill just doing it here with y'all. But uh, if you want more of these, let me know. And if there's specific types of content you want to see from me, then um, yeah, just shoot me a message. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. But either way, much love to y'all. Uh, you know, do the YouTube things. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Peace, guys.